Okay. Thursday on a Friday. Thursday on a Friday. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Good morning. We know it's probably afternoon when everybody watches, but oh yeah, you know. oh yeah. Hello and welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow, the adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Because we don't have a B and L question today. Yeah, we haven't. We don't have a dear Becky and Lizzie today, and it's Friday, and we have maybe things we can vamp about, right? No, no, no. We never have anything to talk about. No. But look, look, it's look. I've been wanting to wear this for like three days. It looks so cute. Wait, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. That is overcast and maybe mildly temperature today. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. <laughs> but I, oh, I'm so excited. Look, look, look. So again, I'm going to suck my tummy in just a little. No, never mind. No, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, this is my faucet with all its ends, all its glory. I, there's a lot of ends that were hanging out of my underarm areas and, um, I tucked them back in. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I have a lot of ends to weave in. This is unblocked. So hopefully, you know, we do this on the show now. It seems to be kind of a thing when I finish a sweater, I will try to wear it unblocked and then blocked and see if anyone could tell the difference. I mean, I'll tell you, but I think that I'm hoping the drape will get a even a little nicer once I block it, you know? If I hold my tummy, look at that. If I hold my tummy, it's great. No. <laughs> um, I think the length is pretty good on this. Uh, like again, the yeah. crop would probably have been up here somewhere. If not a little higher. If Yeah, yeah like right here yeah. might've been where it ended if I had done the crop length it's written for. And she even says in the pattern, I think I've said it here before, she says in the pattern that um, it depends on what you might want to wear it with. If you want to wear it with a skirt, then that might be great because then the skirt kind of flows out and it can be lumpy to have this over a skirt and the skirt tries to puff out from underneath. If you're wearing it with jeans, and I pretty much live in jeans to make it a little longer. And I have jeans that don't like to sit around the thing that is maybe kind of a muffin top. So, you know, I tend to go longer. I was gonna go nine inches on the green from the underarm to the green end of the green and I ended up going about eleven because I checked it against some, you know, experienced people who are gonna make recommendations, including Liz. And they said go a little longer. Yeah. So well see she, the she always the says she always says like twelve inches, but she feels better in like thirteen. I mean, my sorrel, I was wearing that yesterday, is fifteen. And it's comfy, you know, I don't have to do what I affectionately call the Picard tug for all of you Star Trek nerds out there. He gets up and he's like, Foop. he keeps tugging on it. And I will do that. I don't really want to tug on this. Like this is the, the Jody Long Summer Delight. It is mostly cotton with just a hint of cashmere, which softens it up and doesn't make it super crazy expensive. Look, look at that yoke. That is just fun. That, it was fun to knit too. I have a little like black tank top, almost like just a chemise thing, under thing, under this, just to feel more comfortable with the little holes. Because a t-shirt, my regular work shirts are too long, like sleeve wise. Yeah. You've seen me in them as I've been trying them on and stuff, right? Um, that is the dilemma with a, a short sleeve top or something you're going to wear in the spring and summer. If it's see-through, you probably want to wear something underneath, but at that adds layers, which can make it too hot to wear. So sometimes the fiber will help with this. I'm hoping this will breathe well. I may not wear this the whole day until I've blocked it because I don't think it's on this side. I think it's on the other side, but there's like a little hole where I still have to weave, like where I, I changed greens. I think when I put it on this way, this is the, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but this is the side Remember I had to stop halfway through on that last row. This is the side with three rows of teal at the bottom and the back side only has two. I think blocking is gonna help everything like- It's gonna help the- It's the slightly ribbing. blousey at the bottom, well, especially on the back side. And you guys were all worried that if I went down too far on the needles, it'd yeah. be, so it's a little more blousey on the back. Oh yeah, look at that. Well, part of that is there's no, there's no short row shaping for the neck. There's no making the back higher than the front. 
it's kind of reversible, which which could lead to it feeling a little blousey in the back. Like, or it could be my bum, but is making it look I a think, blousey in the I back. I think blocking I it have a bum. will help um will help everything lay a bit flat. If I can get the energy to block it over the weekend, we will find out. You know it's really funny? What? We are color coordinated today. We are. That does not happen very often. Except when we wear matching masks, right? It's true. Um, unintentional. I did not pick these colors because Liz was making a top or a dress or things in similar colors and vice versa. It could be they're just popular colors. Everybody, not everybody, a lot of people love teal. Yeah. I don't even know if I would picked these colors. I mean, I might've been working on it at the same time you picked your colors. Yeah, but your colors were part of a bundle. Yeah. So it's not like you went, ooh, these are colors like you're, you know, yeah. yeah. I even like where the shaping and the line of this falls like this, the, this part is not quite under my, my girls to give it an on pure waist look, but it almost makes me feel like it's not trying to make them look bigger. So I really do like this top. I don't know if it's going to work for everybody, but it was fun. And I don't even mind the little bobbles. I got bobbles, <laughs> but okay. So here's the thing is, is, excuse me. Yarn long, yay, <laughs> is wearing this or wanting to show this off to y'all and um, and not having any letters. I thought, why don't we talk about summer tops, you know, or just tops in general, especially there is that, that funkiness. It depends on where you live. We live in a place that's kind of in between climates in a way. So we will have warm and cool days through the spring, sometimes into the summer. There are some places where most of the year it's just way too hot to wear anything knit on your top, maybe a tank top, maybe something else. Um, but helping some people find some tops in the past week or so, I was reminded of all, of at least I pulled down like three of them. Some tops I've either made pre-pandemic or during the pandemic that then they just go sit up there or sit on a shelf or something. And wouldn't it be nice to remind you all of them and talk about them a little? Well, and some of it like too is the fiber, <laughs> mm -hmm. the weight. And we can get into all of this as we go. Like with your, um, the blue. Bridge Alpaca of the Gods? No. no, Anker Summer Shirt. The Anker Summer Shirt. It is a fantastic summer shirt. Mm -hmm. It's even in the name. Yeah. <laughs> but you'd picked a, we, we picked out a linen alpaca blend. It's written for DK. And we're like, hey, cool. We have this new yarn. Let's try it. And the alpaca tends to add a bit more heat. Yeah. To, or warmth to it the was, sweater. It was alpaca, linen, and bamboo. Viscose from yeah. bamboo, which is usually from bamboo. And I was like, oh, two plant fibers and alpaca makes it soft. And yay, I'm going to make this. And ooh, ooh. I'm gonna, I tried it on and it actually still fits pretty well, even though it's been on a hanger for like a year. Yeah. It looks fantastic, I'm gonna put it on. but the yarn choice might have been mm -hmm. a little off. So I don't wear it that much because it's a little warm for a short sleeve. Yeah. Vamp, Liz, Vamp. talk about what you're wearing. I, I am wearing the Il Grande Favorito, but um, she wrote the pattern for a 10 and for worsted weight. I like doing it on a nine because I, or on a nine, on an 11, because I like the bigger, you know, I do it exactly according to the pattern. I like more positive ease. There's the theory out there that if you're doing a sweater on a bigger needle, like the ranunculus, the love note, I want to say it's the love note. There's a couple of sweaters, dead easy, that are written for a bigger needle, like a 10. And then you, you do and, it on whatever weight you want. And you do it on whatever weight you want. And, you and yeah. you're going, like, if you do a 10, the ranunculus, you kind of need to wear something underneath of it. If you do it in lace weight or fingering or even sometimes a DK, because you're going to be at, like, you can see straight through. But it's a nice overshirt. This. But it's fantastic <laughs> for, it's a little chilly today and I need something to throw on. Mm -hmm. This is double stranded. It's half wool and half half cotton, cotton. and it's 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 the Queensland uh, it's United lace. foursome. Yeah, it's a lace weight, but I double stranded it so it's closer to fingering weight, whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, 
But that cotton in it. The cotton just breathes. I can wear it all day. Yeah. I mean, there are moments that if I'm running around. Get a little overheated. Or standing outside in the sun, I'm going to take it off. Mm -hmm. But that's another idea. Like, find a sweater that you like. And then just thin out the yarn, like change up the fiber, yeah. changing the fiber can, can make it look different. I mean, I think on the episode we filmed about, um, mistakes or like disappointments. Um, this is a, this is a partial disappointment what I'm wearing right now, but, um, the one we said about disappointments, I had that short sleeve sweater I made. I never wear cause it's thick and bulky and, but I picked the right weight of yarn but it was a cheap yarn that wasn't going to drape the same way as a nice yarn or a different fiber yarn yeah. would. So, um, so this is the Anker summer shirt. I, 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 well, Liz chose the yarn, the color, and it's a lovely pale blue, but it's so funny after having that really colorful one on it, totally different look, right? Lovely drape to this. And by drape, it means you can see some of my curves, a drape, a nice drape. You're going to see things. <laughs> A stiff, you know, a, a fuller sweater could hide some of that. A boxier sweater could hide some of that. It depends on what you want to show off and what you don't or how that that one has, has what an inch or two of ease. This one. Yeah. And, and I can't remember when I made it. Was I side. this weight? Was I a different weight? Was I, you know, it's meant to have a different amount of ease. The yoke is actually really simple. It's just ribbing. It's just knit one pearl on ribbing. We had someone come in and say, oh, it looks complicated. And see, it's, it's puckering where I was pulling at it. It looks so comp. It's not complicated. It's knit one pearl one ribbing, and then these little ridges you see is a knit all the way around row where you throw your increases in. This is if you watched my <clears throat> my my sweater episode over on the tips and tricks. This is one of those all over increase yokes. So is the last one I had on where they just all throw in, but it's it's a little warmer. So when we're running around the shop, the, that alpaca. When we're running around the shop, I'm probably not going to be able to stay in it very long because I'm going to overheat a little bit. But right now it's very comfortable. The ridges here, I've got one, two, three, four, five. My size, the bigger sizes have more rings than the smaller sizes to, uh, to allow for more a bigger increases. circumference, more increases before you hit the sleeve separation and then you do the, the torso, the body, and then you come back to the sleeves. So, and this one might also, I think all of them are all gonna pucker a little in the back. Actually, it doesn't. Really? Yeah. I think I blocked this, I'm pretty sure. I, I think you did. This. Yeah, so could be the blocking, could be the shape of the sweater. I can't remember if this one has short rows or anything like that in it. I think it has short rows at the end, like once you're done with the rings, but I don't know. Sometimes the short rows end up down here. Sometimes they're up here. It's very comfy. I will say that it's very, very comfy. So Anker summer shirt. We've had a lot of people get um, the Zoe for this, which is a cotton linen blend, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's a cotton linen blend in that almost it's a strand of each. It's right in front of us here. See, yeah. look, almost the same blue, but not the same yarn. Yeah, it's like a strand of cotton and a strand of linen kind of interwoven a little bit. Juniper Moon has just come out with a new yarn that is very similar. It, it's called like summer or something. I saw it last night on Instagram. Can't remember too many details, but it's got some viscose and some polyester in it. The Zoe, there's like three colors of this we can reorder right now. So much of it, oh, excuse me. That's my morning coffee. So much of this is back ordered. And I don't know if it's because they're transitioning to this other yarn or if there's just production issues that will eventually be resolved. So. My favorite, I really want to make a top out of the pink color of this. And I keep, like last year I was going to and I never did. So we'll see. At this point, I'd love to make a top in some Zoe, but I don't want to, if since I can't reorder it, I don't want to take this out of customers' hands. It's a dilemma for me. So um, I'm going to go put on another top. We'll see how it fits, having been on the hanger for forever because this one so the first short sleeve top i ever made for the shop and it was during the pandemic um actually i might have done this one first which one the soldatna soldatna the one, was it's the first that one i think 
I can't remember anymore. I could go way back in my Instagram feed and find out, right? I but, No, it was right before the pandemic started because we were sitting in here when you made your little um, trial cuff. Yeah, for knit when night. I was when I it was, was one of our last there were people nights. in here for knit night. And during the, the craze of like, oh my gosh, people are buying yarn while the world's shutting down and falling apart. We had listed kits for this. Yeah. So the Soldatna is a Caitlin Hunter um, color work crop short sleeve, all that stuff. And I just couldn't see myself making a short sleeve top out of Merino because I thought it would be too hot. Caveat, I am making another one of her short sleeve tops out of Merino right now. <laughs> Mer Merino though, like it breathes, especially if you do a, a lighter gauge and... <laughs> Sorry. Like, and it also moisture wicks and, you know, you don't want a heavy Merino sweater, but a fingering weight Merino sweater, a thinner one, a thinner one this was written, is going to breathe better. This was written for DK as well. Yeah. Again, I don't know what weight I was when I made this. So we're just going to see and what the hanger did to it. But here's what I did since I didn't want to. Oh, it looks cute. Yeah. <laughs> since I didn't want to. Um try it in a merino, I made it in one of our new cottons. And oh, this is so lovely and airy. And again, the drape of it, it's got such a nice drape, you can see my belt loops right there. So I could pull it away a little bit. But this is the Soldatna crop in, Sammy is, uh, is, a, is a, like a, a two ply, really, really soft cotton, really light DK. So it's thin for a DK from Peru, from a mono yarn company. And I was like, I think this will work. This is even a little shorter, I think, than my faucet. Yeah. This is before I was getting comfortable with going longer, right? But I love the colors. And again, I think it was supposed to stop up here somewhere. And I made it longer. I got more yarn. I made it longer. The the 50 gram skeins of it, smaller to larger, you can get a lot out of this. This only took me six skeins of 50 grams worth of yarn. And this one has noticeable short rows. Cause if you look at the collar part here, how thin it is, and then look at how, what the green's doing. In the yeah, back. you've got an inch to almost two and a half inches. This one is shaped to slope down to give to maybe let it hang better in the back, although it's catching on my bum, cause I got a bum. <laughs> and um, and to hang nicely in the front, you know, to give it the shaping and all this color work, but then there's color work in the torso, but it's almost mindless color work. It's not as complicated as up here. And it's just, it's a lovely, lovely top. And, and you can make it out of so many different yarns, but the Sammy is great. We have kits online, but I feel like I got to double check our inventory levels for what's available online to make sure we have enough for those kits. And and the thing too is if you don't want to do the color work in the torso, I'm going to keep doing this with the bottom. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. Like we had we could make we had, this point. Someone we had a knitter in this past week who, who was, was making it mm -hmm. just solid. She wasn't going to do all this stuff. Cause she was worried about that. She, she lives in Florida. A <laughs> <That> little tank. <laughs> she lives in Florida and mm -hmm. the, she brought up the point where if you do the color, you're going to have all those extra layers to the and, sweater. And maybe it'll be too warm. And then it'll be warmer. The, the cotton, I feel like the cotton is not too heavy and warm. And yes, there's a lot of stranding, but the, another person who was in looking for yarn for it was worried about that stranding showing through because this is a, a thinner DK. So there, you might have, I had to go up a couple of needles on this, but you still, for the most part, don't, I mean, if I really stare at it, I can see it, but then you're too close. Whether or not social distancing stays in place or goes away, you're too close. So, you know, step back and admire the beauty that is the Soldatna. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little short, I think, for, for total comfort, for me not to be thinking about it once in a while. But it's a nice length for the top itself. Everyone's going to have their own comfort level yeah, of where they want it to it's, fall. It's too short-ish for on it, you. Yeah. For me to feel fully comfortable running yeah. around in it because my pants will slip down. 
I've, I've wanted to make that, mm -hmm. um, but it's too long. Like I'd have to crop the, well, the and cropped it's, it's version. Well, it's written to be much shorter and, and you could make it shorter than my, the crop version. My, my other thing it, is like, here. Oh yeah. I like a lot of positive ease. Mm -hmm. Well, like, you know, this and is that decent. one's not designed for a whole lot. So you pick a different size. Yeah, but then it, <laughs> like, some sweaters look better close and some, you know. I'm going to put on a top I made pre-pandemic now that if I made again, I would choose a completely different fiber. And there's a really good chance that this does not fit me anymore. So let's see. It, it is a gorgeous. We've had people make it out of the oxy uh, that you were wearing yeah. yesterday. Um, this is the Bridge of the Gods sweater. It, it is based on a bridge in between Oregon? Washington and Oregon. Okay. And I've driven across the bridge. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, I don't back, like it because easy. you can see through the bottom of the bridge. Uh -huh. um, I don't like bridges. Uh, That's okay. But I leave the, the, end hanging so I can the, the decorative stitch on the collar is very similar to <laughs> the lattice work in the um, bridge. And I made this in a cash merino. Yeah. I think my bra straps are going to show a little, but oh well. It um, actually, actually looks really cute on you. I mean, you can see. It's a little snug. I have put on weight since I made this. You know, you can see it accents. I'm looking at the shadows and I'm like, girls and belly. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I and, and my little tank top is not cooperating Co well it's not hanging the way i want it to so i would i don't think i was this big when i made it and that's okay there you was know, a pandemic there was a pandemic and stress in life and things but it has deck a little bit of decorative work just a hint at the bottom which is also on the cuffs and this this one's by <coughs> excuse me it's not by cough it's by k hopkins and yeah my little the, pink top. Is the like, other thing I like about it is their short row shaping on the butt. Was there? Yeah. It's just a little bit to make the backside hang just a little bit. Like, ignore my tank top, but <laughs> I just it, be it. There, there was, there was short row shaping at the, the bottom. But yeah, I think it kind of went in and out yeah. again. You know, I'm yanking this down. So I'll, I should stop fussing. I'm not good at that. What? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to show off the lovely lace work of the top here. Um, there we go. I feel a little bit better about that. It, it It's really pretty and it's not super hard. And at the time I made this, I'm like, oh, the neck is so wide. I've made so many wider neck things since then. It's a really pretty sweater. It's also written, it's written for DK or sport weight, I want to say. Close I think this sport. was a, yeah. <laughs> Aside, sport weight is becoming really popular. We have not been able to keep up with that trend in the shop and have enough sport weight to have options for people, <laughs> especially if it's not Zoe, you know, <laughs> something like that. We do the best we can. Um, but who knew that sport weight was going to be the new, I don't, whatever the old the was. The new fingering weight. Right. <laughs> fingering weight has been everything lately. Or like the fingering held with the mohair, which is a DK. Um, new trends that we should stay on top of, but the world fell apart. So we're trying. But <laughs> um, but this, this is a wonderful top to make out of a plant fiber. Or if you wanted to go down to a fingering weight for a merino, it would breathe lovely. You know, if you could do it in a DK way, I think what people have done it in the Oxley, the Oxley is a yak blend and it's warm. It's warm and it's on the thicker end of sport. It's luscious. Oh my gosh. This is a Rowan um, baby yeah. cash Merino or yeah. something like that. And they're little 50 gram skeins. And I, I used most of our inventory up just to make this. So, um, but it, it actually feels quite nice right now, especially because we have the air on in here. This feels quite comfortable, except for that whole, when I stand up, I can see all of me like this and I don't want to. <laughs> so if, you know, I might want to wear something under it that helps the, the 
the drape not cling so much. Um, more of a chemise than just a tight tank, that kind of thing. But, you know, all these short sleeve tops, you know, I don't know what to say. That's why I said that. So, <laughs> therefore. Um, therefore, unless that's the more sophisticated, Jessica suggests that or someone's like, Somebody that's more did. sophisticated instead of um. Those are a few of the short sleeve tops that I've made. This one was pre-pandemic. This one was back when I was at the old shop. So a lot of things have changed since then. And that's going to happen. That's one of the things about making tops. Unless you make one with enormous amounts of positive ease, life, <laughs> life can interfere. And I, we've got a, a, a top that I made with Cleo, which is a, a yarn we don't carry anymore over there. It's been on the hanger for so long. I am not going to try that on because it would stick straight out from where it's been on the hanger. Um, and I don't have, it's very, it's got a very lacy openness to it. So it would be really hard for me to try it on right You'd now with that like tank top. Yeah, with the black underneath because it's yellow. So there are so many nice short sleeve tops. The, um, well, and the, the, <laughs> like finding the right pattern and the right design mm -hmm. and the right shape and the right amount of positive ease and the right yarn. Sometimes it that, takes that trial and error. a little error. overwhelming, doesn't it? It, it sounds like a lot, but it's like watching your journey through short sleeve tops today because we've seen four <laughs> or five of them. Um, put this one on because it's my newest again. Keep watching talking. the journey through that, it's taken you making a lot of different sweaters to go, okay, where am I? Where's my comfortable bottom? Mm -hmm. Like, how long do I need that side seam to be? where you know like for me i did a ranunculus and i was like oh my gosh this is awesome positive ease i'm never going back <laughs> ever and i just but then i get to play around with different fibers and how do they look and worsted weight looks great for winter time but the lighter i like lots of drape so bigger needle thinner yarn life is awesome <laughs> but it it can be a trial and error and that's okay and not everything's gonna go perfectly yeah like the one that clings to me a little bit i may not wear that very much unless i lose weight but i don't think i'm gonna lose weight just so i fit in that i'm gonna try to be as healthy as i can for me and that may or may not include weight loss at some point i don't know <laughs> you know so i have these other things that i feel comfortable in right now and that's what i'm gonna wear and the other ones will go on hangers and people will come in and go, Ooh, I want to make that. And I've done that for them, you know, and the other ones at home that I tried and they didn't work or I can, you know, with, with this guy, we can talk about pros and cons of what I picked and why and help someone find it's inside out, <laughs> help someone find, <coughs> find the right yarn for it. You know, yeah. it's, it's a journey. It's absolutely a journey. And I mean, I'm getting back to my Monday tips and tricks here because it all overlaps. Stuff we say here yep. in the shop makes its way over there and vice versa. And sometimes taking a gamble, even if it doesn't work out perfectly, it, you learn so much from it. Well, and if you have a favorite winter sweater, mm -hmm. you can change the you fiber. Mm -hmm. You can change the sleeve length. Like there it, is it no... Will... <laughs> no law that says because it's written for long sleeves that you have to make it long sleeve and vice versa right yeah. yeah it's it's because it's written for short sleeves you can't lengthen the sleeves and some of that knowing how to lengthen the sleeves unless you want poofy sleeves that go straight and, and gather and kind of things it's it's trying stuff out and or making a lot of sweaters so you know where you're going with it i know a lot of people who have taken long sleeve sweaters and made them at least three quarter if not short sleeve the ranunculus, you have options. You can just cap it or right when you separate. And this is pretty yeah, much what these like are. Your sweater you're wearing now is separate and do several rows of ribbing. You're done. And that's it. You're done. Or you can change that. But. Like this, this was written for long sleeve and decreases and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and I did one and a half stripes after my decrease and mm -hmm. then cast off. And I was like, am I comfortable with that length? Eh, it hits me at my elbows. 
you know, I could have done, I could have done another <laughs> stripe. I could have mm -hmm. done less stripe, but you know, it just, it's, I'm like, I'm done. It's figuring out what is your comfort zone. Yeah. What do you like the look of? Like something with an open neck like that, I wouldn't wear personally. Or I would have, you saw how uncomfortable I was when a little bit of something was showing. And, <laughs> and it was something that was supposed to show, like it was a tank top, but it wasn't like just right. So I was like, ah! so having something big and open like that over anything else I'm wearing because of the style of clothes I wear makes me uncomfortable. You know, everyone's going to have their own personal style. So things that are working out perfectly for me or look decent on me may not be what looks good on somebody else. We're all shaped differently too. So, yeah. you know, sometimes it's figuring that out, figuring out how comfy you want it to look. Sometimes being comfy and big is, is works perfectly. And sometimes it, it might make you feel worse about yourself, but you have to decide that. And there are times that you want a tight fitted sweater. And there are times that you want just something to throw on because you're cold. And like you're for around no and other reason. Hanging out than, at home. Yeah. I just want to wear a sweatshirt type sweater. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with either one. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it's just, we thought that, I thought that would be something fun to talk about. Um, and these are the short sleeve ones I have here. The Jupiter crop I'm making at home. It makes its way into my um, morning meditations once in a while. That will be short sleeved. It has patterning. It has color work like this because it's Caitlin Hunter and she does love that. She doesn't only do that, but it has patterning like this all over it. The whole thing is busy. And I'm actually really excited about that. I, I'm doing it in colors I think will be wonderful for the fall. And it's merino, so it's going to be a little bit warmer. Um, I thought about bringing all my sweaters in that I'm working on. I mean, I have sweaters over there we could pull out, but I think we might wrap up pretty soon so we can get ready for our day. I have all the long sleeve sweaters that I've made. Someone came in yesterday, two days ago, was like, your calliope, I think I want to do that, but make them shorter sleeves. And then they felt what the mohair and fingering were together, which is light, but really warm and said, nope. And I was like, you can make it, you know, I like. This is written, the sorrel, which she's made the sorrel for the, the summer sorrel and the spring sorrel are designed for warmer temperatures. But this one was originally designed for a fingering weight and a mohair held together, which would make it fuzzy and really warm. I did it with the DK. It's still really warm, but not in the same way that mohair is. And depending <laughs> on some people run hot, some people run cold, there's all different so many factors factors <laughs> i call mohair the devil's yarn i love it i throw it in everything but it's the devil's yarn but it's the devil's <laughs> yarn one because it can be difficult Excuse to me. pull out and two it's going to heat up every item i wear that it's in mm -hmm. like it's so light and fluffy you think ooh, it grabs <clears throat> little air bubbles and heats them up so it's like wearing down my, my calliope, my sparkly black. It's very light. It's very light. The bottom of it will fluff and flow in the breeze, you yeah. know, but it's warm. Yeah. It'll be too much. I mean, it's also black. It's hard to wear in the summertime in the direct sunlight because it absorbs the sun, but um, it, I probably won't be wearing it much this summer because for many reasons. But if you lived in a colder <clears throat> climate, it would be a layering here this past winter you almost didn't need to wear a jacket over the top of it. No, right? Because it was warm enough. And my striped sweater, now my the, the Andrew Mowry striped sweater, I made out of hearthstone. It's an alpaca and wool blend, but it's really thin. It's a it's very really, light. It's a really light. It's again, it's, a, it's written for sport weight. It's a really thin sport weight, but it's so warm. It's, it's perfect for those really breezy spring and fall days where you don't want something thick and heavy but you need to cut the wind down a little bit. So, you know, there's, and a, a lot of that comes from trial and error. We can give you all the advice in the world, but I don't like to make guarantees. I always like to say like, I don't want to make promises I can't keep because we might be off on something, whether it be your gauge or how you're going to feel in that fiber, that kind of thing. We can give you all the advice in the world and you might still go, oh, yeah, this doesn't work for me. 
yeah. that's okay. So we we've, we've, we advise against hundred percent alpaca sweaters. <clears throat> yeah. Because they grow. Because they grow. Um, we've had <clears throat> people come in and go, Nope, I made one. It grew, but I liked it. So I'm making another or, one. Or this, and, the, this Vogue magazine says to do it in hundred percent alpaca. And I'll be like, we just will let you know ahead of time, this is what might happen. Yeah. And then you take the chance if you want to, we can give you cautions on how to keep it from growing. You know, don't hang it up. You, how to take care of it when you're not wearing it, that kind of thing. But, you know, know your risks going in. <laughs> yes. But yeah, I'm trying to think we've got, we've got some linen and silk blends we've got and that should breathe more, but silk, silk is like, can go either way. Silk can, silk be, can warm. be an insulator. It depends. So that's maybe why the Pollock from Juniper Moon is categorized as a thicker yarn than it looks. Maybe it's because that silk can really provide some insulation. I don't know. You know, <laughs> we're still figuring it out. Been at this in terms of being a yarn shop for almost four years, grand scheme of life, that's not a long time. But I've been working with a lot of different fibers or just knitting in general for far longer. And the more you do, the more you learn. It really is what it's all about. And so take a chance, make a top, they're fun. So I'm trying to think of what else, most of the other tops I'm making at home right now are long sleeve and they're for winter. And I should keep working on them because at some point it will be winter. Winter is always winter is coming. Always coming. The golden fern that I'm making is written for fingering weight. So it's long sleeve. Jennifer Steingast has wonderful yoke top pieces. I should be able to wear it in a few different seasons, especially with um, that the it's the fiber space four ply, which which really it's it's got the warmth and it's got some springiness to it, but it's thin. So in theory. It could be great for summer nights. You know, I'd love to wear it here when I finish it. I've stalled out a little. I started that, that one has color work at the bottom. And I was like, ooh, so I'll do the boring part and then I'll get to the fun part. And I still can't get to the fun part because I scroll a little too much. It's not a thing. Okay, that's what that pause was. I was interpreting for people who don't know it that well yet. But <laughs> um, We've got some cotton here. We were talking with people about a couple of days ago, the, the Cascade Ultra Pima, which is our yarn of the week this week, might actually be warmer than you think or heavier than you think. And there's a chance 100% cotton with the really tight twist, it's got some heft to it. So it might stretch. Like people always say cotton stretches. I don't want to make a top out of 100% cotton. This is 100% cotton. It's been hanging on a hanger and it's still for months looks really good. And I still think it's the same size it was, yeah. but it's also got a really loose twist, two ply twist to it. So it's not, it's not heavy, but like with its own weight. Some, that makes some sense. cottons are very dense. The ultra Pima is pretty dense. It's pretty it's dense. It's got a nice sheen and a nice heft to it, but it's kind of dense. It's, it's like it's the cumulus, thick. the cumulus mm -hmm. and the happiness they've, added some nylon to mm -hmm. so it lightens up and it, it might hold its, its shape fluffier in a yeah i don't know actually i haven't tried it so i think one or two of our knitters have and so maybe they can report back at some point um i've crocheted shawls with the cumulus which is a very lofty cotton but that chainette that same lofty chainette it's not dense but it, it could have some stretch to it and I don't think that the shawl that I've made has really gone too crazy. I don't think so. But, um, but you never know, right? So sometimes, again, it's trial and error and it's taking a gamble. And sometimes gambles work out awesome and sometimes they don't. This, I'm really happy with this. We'll check back in in six months to see if I still like the shape of it. You know, if that cashmere is enough to keep it going. But um, people sometimes come wanting some like bigger, huger cottons. And like, you can't, you can get bigger with cotton, but whether it's going to hold up and do what you want it to do bigger than like a bulky weight, which I'm not talking about like super chonk. I'm talking about a little bigger bit. than worsted. Exactly. We've got the bud and I think that will hold up. It's got a little bit of texture to it, which might help it keep its shape and keep it from stretching. It's got almost a bubbly, not quite a boucle, 
because we don't carry that here. <laughs> Personal thing, you know, but it's got enough of a texture with a strand kind of running through it to stabilize it that I think it would actually hold up pretty well for a while. Bigger than that, it's hard to find a manufacturer that can make it so it's not super heavy and and still be like machine washable and all that good stuff yeah. you know we, I, <clears throat> the the thickest we have is the bud mm -hmm. um we do have the ginga which That's has cotton in it mm -hmm. um they've they've discontinued that the, and they've too. discontinued yeah like there's only a few that we're talking about nora here nora only has a few yarns that get bigger than say worsted or or chunky or bulky um and the the really big stuff comes and goes and we're looking for replacement yarns for a few of ours that of a yarn company that's shut down that we love and we're so sad they're shutting down and it's kind of hard to find the the bulky the super bulky replacements for the things that we love because it's not trendy sport weight is trendy right now but where would we put it do you see space maybe there's a little space right there yeah, but we already have yarn that needs to go fill those holes because I've been focusing elsewhere. Of course we do. Anyway, not that we haven't had anything to do, you know. All right, yeah. we're going to go. Here is your uh, Thursday dose on a Friday. And we have knit night tonight. So please yes. join us for virtual knit night. It is going to be from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Zoom, we are we are still keeping all kinds of precautions in place, and in some ways that is beneficial for those of you who do not live locally. You can join us from all over. We've had new people. We mentioned we had two new people on Tuesday. Yay! We have people come and go from all over the country, and sometimes other countries, and it's really fun. So, and we're you know if we ever get to the place where we feel safe having sit and stitch like out on the plaza or somewhere else. I'm still looking into options for still doing it virtually. So you all in the wider world can join us, which I think would be so much fun. Some people are like, we'll do one day of the week in person and one day virtual. And, and some know. of our virtual knitters can only do one day or the other. So like, I'd it's love to, I'd love but to, we're going to try um, and make it. Yeah. And we're not there yet. We're that's way down the road, but I'd love to have some virtual component even when we start being able to meet in person again. But like I said, we're not there yet. Regardless of what is being sent out as guidelines and other things, we continue to stay virtual right now for large gatherings. Um, and honestly, the, the gatherings we have on Zoom are bigger than what we could put in the shop anyway. So even you know, pre-pandemic. Even pre-pandemic. <clears throat> even when it was safe to jam people in here, <laughs> we couldn't fit that many. This is the table that we would do sit and stitch. And sometimes we we'd go to that table. Three, six, seven, eight, maybe 10. We could maybe fit 12 if people weren't touching the table and just yeah. kind of like piling their chairs yeah. around it. And yeah, so anyway, join us tonight. It's fun. Did we say the chat phone number? 828-877-3550. When you hit join, put that in as the code. You'll go into the wait room. I will hit enter as soon as I notice you, which hopefully won't take too long. And then if you don't turn your camera on, we might ask you to just to like have some camaraderie. If there's tech issues with not turning that on, we'll deal with it. It's all good. Everybody is welcome. And um, this Saturday, but the following Saturday yes. on the 22nd is our dual platform. Dual platform virtual sit and stitch Saturday afternoon. Facebook Live <laughs> and Zoom. Yes, and Facebook Live. The aforementioned Live, phone number yes. will get you in. The Facebook Live is a wonderful way to just kind of see what it's all about. You get to see my lovely mug and not everyone else. So the Zoom option is is really the way to go to feel the full level of camaraderie that we have, but you can sample it on Facebook Live and we will answer comments and questions that you type in and you can usually hear the people on Zoom. And sometimes the people on Zoom don't realize they're also being heard on Facebook. We deal with that if it happens. Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't care. <laughs> sometimes they don't care. Sometimes I'll be like, Oh look, Jessica's over on Facebook, and people go hi, and I'm like they or they we just go like this, yeah. and I'm like they we'll can't wave. see that. Um, I will tell them you're waving. Come when you can, <laughs> leave when you have to. I love that phrase. Yes, that's that's always for every knit night. Every knit night, when even when the shop Afternoon, was brand new, whatever. young, yeah. mm -hmm. it was come when you can, leave when you have to. 
You, if, it's not like it's it's two o'clock or three o'clock and oh, I missed it. No, yeah. you can pop we've, in. Still. We've had people come at the last 15 minutes of knit evening, knit afternoon, whatever. Don't be afraid to either just leave us. If you have to, if you gotta, if you go, have you gotta to. go. Or at the same time, don't be afraid to butt in because we're having an in-depth conversation about cats or whatever else we oh, get gosh, in <laughs> depth about i mean there it's not all about knitting when we all get together to in fact knit. in some ways it's very rarely about knitting we're knitting yes. but we've had people say i want to join your sit and stitch because i can learn so much or i can ask questions and you can but it's more just about community yeah community and friendship and gabbing right. about stuff yeah because you need that yeah. right so if you need to go and you want to say goodbye just, just say, go. hey, I got to go. <laughs> and we'll be like, be like oh, okay. Hang on a second. I got to go. And we go, bye. And yeah. Yeah. Because we value everyone who comes and, and we want to make sure that you feel welcomed on the way in and on the way out. Yep. So, you know. And if you <laughs> don't, if your computer dies, one of our, one of our Lisa's, regular knitters. Shout out to Lisa. And shout out to Lisa. Her computer, computer died. died. To, and I, again, she's probably going like, oh no. Oh, no. no, 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 it happens. It happens. It one happens. of one of our, our, I have got, my computer has frozen and luckily yeah. the sit and stitch kept going. Cause I was like, Oh no, I've killed the whole Somehow thing. Somehow no. I got to be in charge. Of sit and stitch <laughs> and it, we're, You're like, what? what? I'm a host. What? Wait, where's Rebecca? Oh crap. Yeah. And everybody freezes and you're like, and I'm like, Liz, you're frozen. I'm like, wait, everyone's frozen. Everyone's frozen. And That's we, me. we have, we, we have, we have knitters that their battery dies like they're they're like hey i'm here until my battery dies and i think it's going to be soon and then and a couple then, seconds later we look up oh they're gone yeah or we have other knitters who are like hey i'm here and actually it's not even hey i'm here it's rebecca goes i'm here or they're here i usually and, say like so and so's coming in yeah for everybody who's coming in so people can be like yay hi and the person will be like mute yeah and just sit there and listen mm -hmm. and then that's okay they get busy they get a phone call whatever they got to go and sometimes they bounce in and out like it's all good it's that's life you know how convenient in some ways to be able to do that from the comfort of your home or wherever you happen to be and virtual um, midnight for us makes the commute home so much easier so much easier we used to drive home in the dark i i started driving in the dark again every once in a while and I'm getting used to it again, but it's the weird. first few times I was driving home late yesterday and I had someone decide to ride my bum on the windy mountain roads. And I'm like, oh no, 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 you don't. I know these roads. I go a decent clip on these roads. If you do that, I'm going to slow down. Didn't teach him any lessons. Almost felt better. Not really. <laughs> Turned out it was someone who's probably a guest in the same gated community I live in because there's two entrances and I went this way and he had to go that, he, she, I don't know, had to go this way. Usually it takes him a while to get in through the guest gate. So I was like, I'm just going to boom and not really, but I was just like, oh, that's what's going on. Assumptions, you know, yeah. did I, sorry, we should go. You're fine. Yeah. It's uh, two minutes till. Don't, don't ride my bum with your headlights on late at night thinking you're going to get me to go faster. No, no, especially it's, it's around not, here. It's not a because culturally appropriate phrase to say, but homie don't play that. Around here, you not only have swervy roads, mm -hmm. it's dark and there are lots of critters. And by critters, I mean everything from squirrels all the way up to bears. There was a deer on the road on the way in today. So speaking of bears. Bernie found out the bear has been in our neighborhood. The bear you saw on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. It was knocking over trash cans and bird feeders. Amy and D says there's a bear in her neighborhood that's flipped over her really heavy yeah. trash yeah. container thing. She's like, don't leave food in your car. You know, if you come we, by, we, drop something off. We like, locked the car door, but it was like, yeah, bears are probably going to want to go in, but I don't want to wake up to a bear in, in my the car. Woods, in the mountains. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, yeah, don't. I, there have been times when I've been behind a slow driver and I was not going slow. I was, I was doing over the speed limit or right at the speed limit. So for me, that's not slow. I've had people who go like 
below 20 on these roads because they don't they're not familiar with them and at night everything and looks I get an, different yeah and, and i get annoyed yeah. but i'm gonna give them their space because i know what it's like when someone rides my bum yeah speaking of bumps and mm -hmm. okay <laughs> we should let you go because we should start our day because it's 10 o'clock come to knit night where the liz and rebecca show is with Continues. other people <laughs> and other people tell funny stories and people shout out to kathy coming in at the times where they're like what are you talking about what and we go mm -hmm. that's us that's our group anyway we love y'all we miss you we hope you're staying safe or doing what you need to do and um, if you haven't already subscribed, because we are still in competition with my other channel, subscribe, like, ring the bell, ring the do bell, whatever do whatever you have to do, because she's now winning. But it's not a competition. It's not a competition because they're both my channels. But this is five nineteen. My other ones, my tips and tricks, is at five twenty one. So <laughs> we get rewards. Keep it going. Yeah, if we, we will get to 600. You. My other channel, I don't talk about it on there, and yet it's growing. I mean, that's cool, but you guys can beat them, even though some of you are the same people that are over there. That's great. Subscribe to both of them because I love it. Okay. All right. For anyone who's not coming to Knit Night, have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. Oh, I should say, if we're doing all these shout outs, shout out to Karen Grammy Knitterbug because she always makes the best comments on our videos. And even yesterday's little like itty bitty one, she was just like, I can't wait. I'm waiting. Yay, I'm ready for it. <laughs> She's awesome. So shout out. Awesome. Okay. I'm done. I'm going to turn it off. Bye. Are you sure? I'm going. <laughs> See you guys next week. <laughs>